Uh, we are going to uh, we'll, we're going to be joined right now by Lila Rose. She, of course, is the uh, is the head of a massive pro life organization. That organization is Live Action. Lila is joining us on the line right now. Lila, go for it. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well, Ben. What a morning! What a day! It's it's uh, it's surreal. It is. I mean, it's an amazing thing. As I was just concluding there, you know, when it comes to you know what what happens next, the answer is we get active because really your job starts now. I mean, it, for for a lot of people, a lot of politicians who promised that they were pro life, Roe versus Wade was a convenient excuse to not do very much. Well, now Roe versus Wade is gone, and so now it's actually up to them to do something. Listen, this is a, a historic moment. We all feel it. We know it. Even today, there are abortion clinics closing because of this decision, because of the overruling of Roe v. Wade. So there are children that were scheduled to be killed today by abortion that will live instead. And by the end of the day, there will likely be a dozen states where laws will have gone into effect that protect children. And then there are hundreds of laws on the books right now across the country and state by state that have been stalled because of the unjust, illogical, immoral decision of Roe v. Wade. And these laws will now be able to go into effect in the coming weeks. So this is a tremendous victory. It is a historic moment because children are now going to have protection in some states. But like you're saying, we are just getting started because to send abortion, as it says, they say, back to the states is not justice. We should not, as a state, whether you're a blue or a red state, get to decide whether children live or die. These are human beings. The science is conclusive. Human life doesn't begin at birth. It begins before birth at the moment of fertilization. So the Supreme Court took a step towards justice, but this isn't full justice yet. To say that the abortion is silent on, uh, that the Constitution is silent on abortion, and then states should get to decide whether these children live or die, that's not justice. The reality is, the abortion is, uh, the Constitution is not silent on abortion. In the 14th Amendment, it specifically lays out that states have to have a, have a responsibility to provide equal protection to their people, that states cannot, without due process, deprive anyone of life, liberty, or property life. And that includes everyone, all human beings, including the, those those in the womb who are just as human as you or me. So for states to say, if you're a blue state, if I'm in stomping ground, Ben, and California is a very blue state, it's very pro-abortion, but they should not have the right to permit the unfettered killing of children in the womb. So like you're saying, our work is just getting started. We're going to work state by state for legal protections. And then we've got to do cultural change. And we have to keep on urging the Supreme Court to take a final step towards justice here and assert that there is a constitutional right to life for all children. Yeah, that, that final step, it seems, I mean, frankly, based on the majority opinion, seems unlikely, uh, mainly because, I mean, Justice Kavanaugh is, based, I mean, he, he writes in his concurrence that, that he believes that any law, a state law that prevents somebody from visiting another state in order to obtain an abortion would be presumptively illegal. So you don't even have a majority opinion on that basis. Uh, I, I do have to say that, that I'm rather unsurprised by Chief Justice Roberts's concurrence, which is predictably weak need and pathetic. Uh, he basically says that he concurs in the judgment that Mississippi's law is, is okay constitutionally. But he says he would have created a brand new standard where a woman would have a reasonable period to get an abortion, reasonable to be left up to the ad hoc decision of justices like Breyer, Sotomayor and Kagan, who would imagine, I would imagine, would say reasonable extends all the way up till five years past point of birth. Uh, and uh, and in his opinion, would be 10 weeks or whatever it is. You know, it just goes to show you, you know, President Trump you know, and, and Mitch McConnell, they got a lot of flack for not allowing Merrick Garland to fill the seat left by Justice Kennedy. Uh, but that unwillingness led to this decision today because one vote short, really one. I mean, if this had been a 4-4 a four, four court, I have serious doubts as to whether Justice Roberts would have voted to strike down Roe versus Wade at all. And if given the choice between upholding the Mississippi law and striking down Roe versus Wade or rejecting the Mississippi law and upholding Roe versus Wade, I have a feeling he would have gone with the latter here. I think you're right, Ben. And I, I mean, listen, Justice Roberts has never been uh, a hero for the truth on the court. And I think that, you know, your listeners know that, that he has been uh, always trying to create compromises where compromises shouldn't exist. You don't compromise with someone's right to life. You don't compromise with a fundamental human right to be born. That There is no compromise. And yet, like you say, there is a, you know, some mealy mouth compromise here and there. But the reality is that Roe v. Wade is overruled.
it's done. And this is a huge step forward. And so, yes, it's not perfect, but it is a huge step forward. And I think we need to keep our eye on the goal here. The, the goal is complete cultural and legal change. So we can achieve change in states like Texas, you know, already states like Missouri banning abortion completely because of the, the decision this morning. Uh, this is a huge step forward. But now we're, our fight is on. Our fight is on in the blue states. Whether you're a child conceived in a blue or red state should not mean whether you live or die. If, if your parents want to have you have you scheduled for an abortion. So our work has just started. The pro-life movement is doing three things right now. Um, live action, my organization is focused on three things. First of all, education. Many people still don't understand what the abortion procedure actually entails. How, it's violence against that unborn developing child. They don't understand the science and the logic behind the pro-life position. They don't understand or they haven't been really enough uh, shown the uh, human development in the womb. So we have to keep educating people. Now, Number two, legal work. We have work to do in state legislatures now to completely abolish abortion wherever it's possible. And that will happen. I mean, it's going to happen in at least 20 states. Um, it's going to happen probably in more as we work state by state. And then we have to do the third thing, which is support and help families. I mean, we need to make our country a safer and healthier place for families, for mothers, for fathers. And that means shoring up the networks of support that our movement has, pregnancy resource centers, uh, helping local communities, making sure that we're active in our faith communities to support the young to support young families. And there's a whole lot more to do to connect uh, young mothers or women facing unplanned pregnancy with resources. I just encourage everyone, get in the fight now. You know, the fight is actually just beginning. We are just getting started. And this, the, the beauty of this moment is now we have a shot. Now we have a shot to achieve complete legal protection in some states, and that will already happen. And now we have a shot to actually make sure that if you are a child you know, in, in Texas, or if you're a child in Missouri, you're gonna have the protection that you deserve. So this is a huge step forward, but it's just the beginning. Well, that is Lila Rose. Her organization is Live Action. If you wanna go help them out, which you absolutely should, because again, the fight really begins today. Liveaction.org, it's liveaction.org to get active and protect human life on the state and eventually on the federal level. Lila, really appreciate the time on this historic and uh, an amazing day. Thanks, Ben. Roe versus, the, the overturning of Roe versus Wade this is a historic, excellent day for the country. It is a historic, excellent day for the protection of the unborn. And again, all it does is it means that we are now more responsible. Those of us who care about unborn human life, it is our job now. We no longer get to blame the Supreme Court for not doing anything. The Supreme Court did what it should have done originally, which is leave this up to the people of the United States. That is an unfettered, unmitigated good today. So tonight, if you're a pro-life person, celebrate. And in the morning, get to work. Because this is where the battle really begins. This is where the rubber hits the road. And uh, as far as the, the statements by Democrats that they are going to not adhere to the decision, this is still the law of the land, as the Constitution ever was. All righty.